Good morning, happy Tuesday everyone. Thank God. He's waking us again. He's blessed us with another opportunity to trust in Him, to be led by His Spirit, and to be transformed into the image of His Son, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Church of God of Prophecy's Daily Bible Study. And I thank you for joining me to study the Word of God. Let's pray. Dear Father in Heaven, we come to you this morning joyful. Joyful because you are victorious over sin and death. You have created reconciliation between your fallen people and yourself. You brought us back to you, Lord, through the blood of your son, Jesus. You've done all that was required to ensure that we will be with you for eternity. That after this period of grace, we will dwell in your house. I thank you, Father. I thank you for caring so much for us. That you provide all we need. And Lord, all we need is in you. Everything that we desire that is good will come from you. Thank you, Father, for your word. The word that lightens the path, that shows us which way you want us to go. And your Holy Spirit that lives in us, that provides a conscience so that we know when we're making a wrong step before we do it, so that we could turn away and not sin against you. Thank you, Father, for blessing us so much. You provide all we need to walk in the same way that your son Jesus came here and walked blamelessly, sinlessly on this earth. I pray, dear God, that someone is encouraged today. They're encouraged by the words of this lesson to draw closer to you so that they may be blessed abundantly and be able to walk in your will. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, our daily devotional this morning is titled, Revelation of Hidden Treasures Promised. And it's from the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 45 verses 1 through 7. <clears throat> Isaiah, 140, 1, Isaiah 45, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two leaved gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in asunder the bars of iron. I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. For Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. 
I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God besides me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I the Lord do all these things. The Lord is good. This devotional is God speaking about who He is. And he's also um, telling uh, the things that he's responsible for. He formed light and creates darkness. He made peace and create evil. First time I've ever seen that in the Bible. God is a God of promises. He's a God that we can trust because his word is precious to him. <clears throat> okay. Continuing this week's lesson in section 1B. Uh, the title is revealed to us from the book of Ephesians, um, chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, and it reads, Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The commentary says the Holy Spirit has now entrusted to us the same mystery, verses 3 and 4, entrusted to Paul and holy apostles and prophets, verse 5. In verse 6, Paul states the content of the mystery in a summary fashion using three Greek words that are each prefixed by S-Y-N, meaning together with or co. First is co heirs, fellow heirs. Simli noma. In Romans 8.17, Paul speaks of believers being co heirs with Christ. Here, as in Galatians 3.29 and Galatians 4.7, he stresses the fact that in Christ, Gentiles are co-heirs of the kingdom along with Jews. All who belong to Christ are Adam's seed. Galatians 3.29 Thus heirs of the promise God gave him. Second, they are co-members of the same body. 
sin soma. Hence, they enjoy a co corporate relationship. Paul affirms the complete interrogation and equal equality of believing Gentiles with Jews. Third, they are partakers of his promise. Sin Toba. That is co partners or shares together in the NIV. This term recurs in Ephesians five seven in a different context and stands in contrast with two twelve, which says Gentiles had once been foreigners to the covenants of the promise. Because of Christ, Gentiles are fellow partakers of the covenant promise made originally to Jews. <clears throat> so we have an insert here titled Our Business. God is not saving the world. It is done. Our business is to get men and women to realize it. And that's written by Oswald Chambers. God has already saved the world. But we need to realize that and walk in his victory. So that we're not partakers of the world's solutions to the problems of life. God is the answer. He's provided all that we need. We just need to claim it. We need to claim it through faith and then stand and watch him stand by and make his word come true. God is truth. If he says a thing, he will do it. And that is what we stand on and that's what we trust in that God will be uh, a rewarder of those who seek him and believe in him. Thank you for your time this morning. I'm going to stop here. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to start section two, titled, Proclaiming God's Revealed Plan. And so, until tomorrow, I encourage you, speak to God. Talk to Him. Let Him know what's on your mind. Listen to see if He responds to you. By that way, you develop a relationship with him. You draw closer to him, and he can enjoy a fellowship that he wasn't having yesterday. Okay, thank you. I'll be blessed, and God willing, we will meet again tomorrow.